Hi all, hope you are well out there. I wanted to do this video because uh, with what has happened with Caroline Flack, uh, suicide is very prominent in the media at the moment. And as somebody who has experienced suicidal feelings and subsequently recovered from suicidal feelings, suicidal ideation, suicidal thoughts, I thought I would give my my thoughts on the subject, my two cents on the subject. So firstly, when anyone dies, we are made the less for it. There's a fantastic poem by John Don called No Man is an Island. No one is an island. No one is just an island entire of themselves. We are all part of the same whole. So when somebody dies, regardless of the circumstances, we are all made the less for it because we've lost one of the keys. So regardless of what your belief on suicide is or what your opinion on suicide is, I think we can agree that it's, it's sad when anybody dies. The second thing that I think what scares people about this, especially in this case, but also in cases like um, Robin Williams, um, people like that, is that these are successful people and on the surface they seem to have everything they seem to have everything that society tells us that we want they're good looking they are successful in that they are uh, rich and wealthy they're famous and to all outward appearances they appear to be happy so when we hear that they've killed themselves this doesn't really fit our our narrative this doesn't fit up the story that we have because in our heads we strive and strive and strive for this image of success and then once we get it ah then we'll be happy but as we've seen in these cases it's often these so-called successful people these wealthy good looking outward lit to the outward appearance it seems as though everything's in place so that when they when they kill themselves it doesn't fit. So this is what makes it so shocking and so scary. To me, this speaks to the human condition in a nutshell, because the superficial world is bullshit. It is. It will not help you here. It won't. Because I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how good the family situation appears like it should be. I don't care how good your career is, how so-called successful you are. If you don't take a look in here, you are going to be unsettled. Something isn't going to feel right. Because the superficial world, it's a load of rubbish. It is. It's a load of rubbish. Social media comes under a lot of fire here. Um, because we, we like to... when. When tragedies happen, we try to find somebody to blame. We try to find someone to pin it on. And in the case of Caroline Flack, it seems to be we've, we've turned to social media. And say, oh, yeah, 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 social media is the problem. This problem has been going on forever. People have always done it. People have always killed themselves. It, there, there may be an element that social media hasn't helped the situation, but we can't blame one single thing. I think social media has has shown the world something very interesting because we we can recognize now and we can see that actually what people put out on social media isn't necessarily reflective or representative of what's going on in here or in here. So we've started to recognize this and started to see this, but I would encourage you to start taking a look as well. It's not just what you type down and then post. It's also what you express in your everyday life. Everything that you say, everything that you do. Are you sure that it is an authentic representation of what's going on in here and what's going on in here? Because a lot of us put up a mask. When I look at these pictures, you see these pictures of Caroline Flack, you see it with Robin Williams as well, you see it with 
um, all of these successful people, you see these pictures where they're all smiling and they're happy. Look in their eyes. Look in their eyes, it'll tell you everything that you need to know. It doesn't reflect what's going on in here. So if you want to stay well and be well, one of the things that we must look um, to do is remain authentic and remain true to ourselves. So this is interesting because I look back, I looked through a lot of the stuff that I put out on this page, on my personal trainer page, and as I was looking back, I thought, hang on a minute, the way that I'm talking about these things makes it seem like I am walking on sunshine all the time, that I'm skipping through life, that life's a breeze because, yeah, I recovered from mental health stuff and I'm like sober now. So, yeah, I got better, lost all this weight. So now everything's just fantastic. Every single day is just amazing. It's not the case. It's not the case. There are days when I feel, I feel almost like I'm right back to square one. There are days that dark cloud come back over me. There are days I'm struggling. Now things are a lot better because of what I did. And now that I recognize these things, I can cope a lot better and I have strategies so that that dark cloud passes a lot quicker and that I recognize that it is just a dark cloud and it will pass. But I realised that actually everything that I put put out there on social media isn't necessarily an accurate reflection of what's going on in here. So that made me think maybe I need to be a little more honest in um, sometimes that there are dips and it's not just a flawless run straight to the end because life just doesn't work like that. So I, I keep seeing this um, be kind be kind thing and it's lovely it's a great sentiment it's re it really is beautiful however do you really think that that that's the a the problem and b the solution obviously we could all do with being a bit more kind oh uh, yeah no people could do with being a lot more kind everybody could just posting just changing your profile picture to have be kind under it that's not going to cut it that's not going to cut it. It has to be an authentic representation of yourself. And if you, it's a, it's a quote by Gandhi that you have to be the change you want to see in the world. So if you're wanting to encourage other people to be kind, the best place to start is with yourself. And just being fully, where possible, being selflessly kind. So just recognizing and appreciating humans in all of their different expressions and in their different forms just being the space in which people can express themselves so this is one of the crucial things that we have to learn to do especially if we are trying to support somebody that we feel may be depressed or we feel that they may be suicidal. So moving on to how to support people if we feel like something's just not right. Firstly, trust your intuition. You know your friends better than anyone. You might even know them better than they know themselves. So trust your intuition that if something doesn't feel right about the way they're talking and they just don't see themselves, you're probably right. You could be wrong, they might just be having a bad day or whatever, but just looking inwards, reflecting, are they okay? Or I don't really like the way that they're, the way that they're talking and stuff. Something's just, it's not sitting very easily with me. So trust that intuition. If we want people to talk, and express themselves about their emotions and about their inner world, their inner life, then we must become the space in which people can open up. Because people cannot open up if we keep putting this barrier here. So if somebody starts to talk about their emotions, let's not interrupt. We're not going to go in with more questions. We have to remain completely open and totally non-judgmental. So there's no, oh, you should have done this, or 
not even trying to fix the problem. Oh, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that. Maybe you should have done this. Maybe this should happen. Just hear it out. Hear it out. Hear it out. Because by being this space and hearing it out, you're diffusing the energy. So there's a lot of this negative, angry, bitter energy when we're feeling suicidal. So we need that space in order to diffuse that energy outwards. Just being the space, just opening out, opening out. Don't get involved. Just listen, listen, listen. One of the things, if we're feeling like, um, if we're worried that people might be feeling suicidal, and there's a few ways to tell. So there's a few little telltale signs if we feel it, if, if you wonder if somebody is suicidal or not. One is they, they joke about suicide or they just talk about it a little bit sort of um, just to one side of the subject. So they might be like, oh God, another day like this, oh, I might kill myself. Or they might just joke about it like, oh my God, like just hand me the gun now, bang, I'll just do it now. They might joke about it because it's on their mind and it's because you're, you're almost sort of like feeling out the room um, just to kind of see how people respond. It, and sometimes there's a great phrase that a lot of truth is said in jest. Sometimes we say things in jest as a joke if we don't feel comfortable saying it um, authentically, if we, don't, if we don't feel like saying it um, in, in the true way that we're actually feel like feeling it we might express it as a joke. So keeping an ear out for that. Personality change. You, again, you know your friends better than anyone. So if someone's personality has shifted, positive or negative, there's something just... It, just keeping an ear out, keeping an eye out for it. Obviously, all the signs of depression, withdrawing from social things, um, not being able to keep eye contact. So sort of always looking down, um, very monotone in the voice and very sort of down, very um, closed off body language, things like this. So tearful, hiding, hiding the face, um, self-comforting behaviours, these sorts of things. These are all outward signs of, of things like depression. One of the things we don't like to do when we're worried that people are suicidal is just straight up ask them because you feel like you might be putting an idea in their head, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't work like that. Um, they've either considered suicide or they haven't. And if you ask them, have you had any suicidal thoughts? Have you had any, any thoughts of harming yourself at all? You're not going to put an idea in their head. They've either thought about it or they haven't. That's the only two options. And most people, interestingly, will answer honestly. They will. In fact, it can be such a massive relief. I remember the first time a doctor asked me, um, have you had any thoughts of harming yourself? Any thoughts of suicide? I said, actually, I was all set to go, no, 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 absolutely not. But something in me just decided enough was enough. So I said, yeah, actually, yeah, I have. I do have those thoughts. The moment I expressed that, the moment I said that, I felt this huge wave of relief because it was off my chest now. And there was a medical professional in front of me who was there willing to help. And it did help. And we start to put in all these things in place so that I wouldn't feel that way anymore. And I don't. So that honest um, questioning, have you had any thoughts of harming yourself? Felt like, have you ever sort of felt like killing yourself? People will answer honestly. If they say yes. If they say yes, now we need to assess how the risk. So, I mean, I'm not a med I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not a medical professional. This is just things that I've learnt, um, and I've done a lot of reading on the subject. So, if they do say yes, we have to firstly don't react with shock and horror. If they say yeah, I, I do feel like killing myself. They go, oh my god, oh my god. So don't panic. Like oh, oh god, oh well. Quick, we need to like press the red button and get you like locked up quickly. It's like that's not going to help. If they say so, reacting as if it's just like oh okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, you, you shouldn't have to be feeling that way. 
um, that's a horrible way to feel. Um, lots of people who are feeling low feel that way, so it's normal. Um, you don't have to put up with it. Um, so that there's a way forward. Um, this is just a cloud passing. This is how you're feeling at the moment. Just because you feel this way now doesn't mean that you're going to feel this way in the future. Um, gently encouraging them to see a medical professional. You can't force people to go and see doctors, but gentle encouragement to see a medical professional. And the same thing that everybody needs is love, compassion, respect, understanding. Trust your natural instincts. If someone needs a hug, they need a hug. If someone needs some space, give them some space. If someone needs a friend, just be that friend. Trust your natural intuition because that's what we're there for as friends. So that's a few things on one how to tell if somebody is suicidal and what to do if they start to express that they are. It's a mystery. It's still a mystery. They, st they still don't really understand suicide, why it happens. If you've been affected by suicide, or even if, if you felt if you feel suicidal yourself, or have felt suicidal yourself, and you're a little bit confused about it, I recommend a book called *Night Falls Fast* um, by Kay Redfield Jameson. She's a fantastic writer. She is a scientist, and she suffered with bipolar herself. And it's got works of poetry in there. It's got scientific studies in there. It's a deep exploration into suicide and the causes. Um, and reading that book really helped me because I started to get a grip on everything that has come before, the history of it, the current medical research into it, and just to try and gain a deeper understanding of why this phenomena happens. One of the things that she outlines in there, and this is if you're, if you're confused about the Caroline Flack thing, one of the biggest um, predetermining factors in people's suicidality is shame. Shame and guilt. You see it a lot in people who have been caught for crimes or who have suddenly been outed and exposed. Maybe they've been um, exposed as they've been having affairs or they've been exposed for sort of committing a fraud or this crime or something. So to my mind, it seems like because of all this exposure, because of um, <clears throat> the court case that she was going to be going through, and all of this very public, open exposure, it leads to a, an unbearable sense of shame and an unbearable sense of guilt. I believe the reason that shame and guilt is such a nasty and negative feeling is because it's very isolating. You feel like you can't talk to people about things because every she, she will have been feeling like everyone was judging her. So even in trying to express herself to close friends, you know on some level that guilt and that shame. You, 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 even on some level, even with your closest friends, you feel like they're going to um, have some element of judgment or resentment for you. It's sad. It's real sad when somebody goes. There's light at the end of the tunnel because there's a lot of recognition for this now. It used to be that we swept suicide under the carpet. It used to be, and really, in, this, this will tell you everything you need to know about suicide um, in medieval times. Um, they used to bury suicide victims without, um, without funerals. They believed they were going to go straight to hell. They did it. They, they made no um, song and dance about it at all. They would just bury them without funerals, not in a graveyard, because they didn't want the what they believed was this infected spirit to get into the spirits of the other dead people. And they would bury these people at crossroads because they believed that the carts coming over the top would help keep the spirit buried and keep the spirit down. So that's how they used to view suicide. They also often uh, used to 
do on death certificates. They, they wouldn't write suicide. They would write inflammation of the brain or natural causes um, when really they meant suicide. So statistics were often off in the past. But now it's about talking about it and about being open about it. And let's be honest, because change can only happen with awareness and awareness can only happen if we are telling the truth. So being truthful about it, being open about it, being honest about it. If you are feeling that way yourself, please, I know it's hard, but please try and talk to someone. If you don't have friends and family that will listen, that is okay. See a doctor. See a doctor. That is what they're there for. They don't press the panic button and lock you up. Just the conversation can make that cloud pass so much quicker. You will feel so much freer, so much more open. Your natural optimism, hope and joy will return if you let it. world wants you to live. The universe wants you to live. No matter how it might feel, no matter how it might seem sometimes, no matter how much chaos is going on up here, there is something deeper inside you that wants you to live. It is the universal love of the world. The love of humanity lives in you. This superficial world is utter rubbish, total utter rubbish. It is an illusion. It is false. Money doesn't exist. Your career pah, doesn't exist. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. It's total rubbish. Take a look inside. Stay present. Breathe. Be open the experiences of the world. Don't give so much importance to the mind. If you're feeling, particularly if you're feeling negative, feeling low, thoughts and feelings are just visitors. They come and they go. How you feel today, that's not how you're going to feel in a week's time. It is all temporary. I hope you are well out there. I hope you are well. And if this, if the Caroline Flack thing has shocked you, I would say trust that natural inquisitiveness and that curiosity. It's shocking and it's worrying and unsettling. Don't just try and lock that away in a closet. Let's take a look at it. This is unsettling. This is worrying. Take a look because by going through and seeing where this leads us with this inquisitiveness, it leads to a, a very deep, deep understanding of yourself and of the world and of humanity. Even if you don't believe me that the universe loves you and that humanity loves you, please believe me when I say that I love you and I want you to be well and happy. That's everything I have for you today. I will see you soon.